Fair Sheep Genesis chapter 47 verse 28 And Jacob lived in the land of Mitzrayim seventeen years. So the length of Jacob's life was one hundred and forty-seven years. And the time for Israel to die drew near. And he called his son Joseph and said to him, Now if I have found favor in your eyes, please put your hand under my thigh and show kindness and truth to me. Please do not bury me in Mitzrayim, but I shall lie with my fathers, and you shall take me up out of Mitzrayim and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I do as you have said. And he said, Swear to me. And he swore to him. And Yisrael bowed himself on the head of the bed. Chapter 48 And after these events it came to be that it was said to Joseph, See, your father is sick. And he took with him two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, See, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, El Shaddai appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and Barak me, and said to me, See, I am making you bear fruit and shall increase you and make of you an assembly of peoples and give this land to your seed after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Ephraim, Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Mitzrayim, before I came to you in Mitzrayim, are mine, as Reuben and Shimon, they are mine. Your offspring, whom you shall bring forth after them, are yours, and let them be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. And I, when I came from Padan, Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Beit Lehem. And Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom Elohim has given me in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me, and let me barak them. And the eyes of Israel were dim with age, and he was unable to see. And he drew them near him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but see, Elohim has also shown me your seed. So Joseph brought them from between his knees, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim with his right hand toward Yisrael's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Yisrael's right hand, and brought them near him. And Yisrael stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, consciously directing his hands for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he barak Joseph and said, The Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the Elohim who has fed me all my life long to this day, the messenger who has redeemed me from all evil, barak the youths, and let my name be called upon them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Yitzchak, and let them increase to a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it was evil in his eyes, and he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from the head of Ephraim to the head of Manasseh. And Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn, Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also becomes a people 
and he also is great. And yet, his younger brother is greater than he, and his seed is to become the completeness of the nations. And he barak them on that day, saying, In you, Yisrael, shall barak, saying, Elohim, make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. Thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said to Yosef, See, I am dying, but Elohim shall be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. And I, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I took from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Chapter 49 And Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together, so that I declare to you what is to befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Yisrael, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my power and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of exaltation and the excellency of of power. Unstable as waters, you do not excel, because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. Shimon and Levi are brothers. Their weapons are implements of violence. Let my being not enter their council. Let my esteem not be united to their assembly, because they slew a man in their displeasure and they lamed an ox in pleasure. Cursed be their displeasure, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. You, Yehuda, your brothers praise you. Your hand is on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children bow down before you. Yehuda is a lion's cub. From the prey you have gone up, my son. He bowed down. He crouched like a lion, and like a lion who rouses him. The scepter shall not turn aside from Yehuda, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him is the obedience of peoples. Binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun dwells at the seashore. He is a haven for ships, and his border is unto Sidon. Yishikar is a strong donkey lying down between two burdens, and he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, and he inclined his shoulder to bear a burden, and became a subject to the slave labor. Dan rightly rules his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan is a serpent by the way, an adder by the path, that bites the horse's heels so that its rider falls backwards. I have waited for your deliverance, O Yahweh, Gad, a raiding band, raids him, but he raids its heel. Bread from Asher is rich, and he gives delicacies of a sovereign. Naphtali is a deer let loose. He gives words of elegance. Joseph is an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree, an offshoot of a fruit-bearing tree by a fountain. His branches run over a wall. And the archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, and hated him. But his bow remained in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel, from the El of your father who helps you, and by El Shaddai who barak you with Birakoth of the Shamayim above, Birakoth of the deep that lies beneath, Birakoth of the breast 
and of the womb. The Birakoth of your father have excelled the Birakoth of my ancestors up to the limit of the everlasting hills. They are on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separated from his brothers. Benjamin is a wolf that tears. In the morning he eats prey and at night he divides the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father spoke to them. And he barak them, he barak each one according to his own barakah. And he commanded them and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is before Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought with the field of Ephron, the Hittite, as a possession for a burial site. There they buried Abraham and Sarah his wife. There they buried Yitshak and Ribkah his wife. And there I buried Leah. The field purchased and the cave which is in it from the sons of Heth. And when Jacob ended commanding his sons, he drew his feet up into the bed and breathed his last and was gathered to his people. Chapter 50 And Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Yosef commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. And forty days were completed for him, for so are completed the days of embalming. And the Mitzrites wept for him seventy days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Yosef spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now, I have found favor in your eyes. Please speak in the hearing of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, See, I am dying. Bury me in my grave, which I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. And now, please let me go up and bury my father and return. And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father as he has made you swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Mitzrayim, and all the house of Joseph, and his brothers, and his father's house, only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Yardin. And they lamented there with a great and very heavy lamentation. And he observed seven days of mourning for his father. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous mourning for the Mitzrayim. That is why its name was called Abel Mitzrayim, which is beyond the Yardin. And his sons did to him as he had commanded them. For his sons brought him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite as property for a burial site. And after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Mitzrayim, and he and his brothers and all who went up with him to bury his father. And when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph hates us and pays us back all the evil which we did to him? And they sent word to Joseph, saying, before your father died, he commanded, saying, This is what you are to say to Joseph. 
I beg you please, forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the Elohim of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, See, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of Elohim? And you, you intended evil against me, but Elohim intended it for good, in order to do it as it is this day to keep a great many people alive. And now, do not fear. I provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And Joseph dwelt to Mitzrayim, he and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Makur, son of Manasseh, were also brought up on Joseph's knee. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am dying, but Elohim shall certainly visit you and bring you out of this land, to the land of which he spoke to Abraham, to Yitzhak, and to Jacob. And Joseph made the children of Israel swear, saying, Elohim shall certainly visit you, and you shall bring up my bones from here. And Joseph died, being one hundred and ten years old. And they embalmed him, and he was placed in a coffin in Mitzrayim. Baruch be the reading of the word. Amen and Amen. Shabbat Shalom.